So this is a brief introduction to my Storytime Photoshop Actions. So this is my RAW file straight out of camera. It's had no adjustments at all, not even an Adobe Camera RAW. And we're going to explore these actions and see what effects we can get. So to install them, you just come up to this play button. Make sure on the actions tab, click this button here, load actions. Then find where you've downloaded them and click open. I've already got them installed. Now I really suggest when you start, just try all of these actions. Some will work better than others on your image. It depends what color combination you have in your image, what light you've got. So just try them all and see what works best. As you use them more and more, you'll get to know which actions are like to work best and you can try them first. So let's try here, let's just try story. We just click play and there we go. So it's quite a stylized effect this, but I like that effect on the greens. Another thing you can do with this is, you know, I don't like that kind of greeny color here. So what I might do is just add my own layer so if I come over here to adjustments, hue saturation, I'm going to use this little button to find out what color that is because I'm not sure if it's green or yellow. It's yellow. So then I can just play with hue and saturation. I actually quite like that overall as an, a color adjustment. It's quite effective. It's quite stylized, but I actually quite like it. But if I don't want it all over on my model, then what I can do is just Invert the mask, Command I, desaturate, and then with a white brush, for this I probably would have 100%, just take out any areas where I think it's just a bit too green still. And I can just adjust my opacity to where I like it. I think that's probably a little bit better than that bright green. What I could then do is lower my brush opacity and take it down a little bit on the model as well. So there's a lot I can do with these actions to really make them my own. One action which is good where you've got greens is Milky Way. So let's just click that. So I think that's a nice effect already. So before, after. What I might do is just bring a bit of that dark area up. So I'd go down to my curves. And I would just block them off in the kind of dark area might bring the opacity of my brush down a little bit because I don't want it too strong. I just want to bring back a little bit of detail. So before, after. Now what this one allows you to do is to get really nice dark desaturated greens. So I'm going to go on to this layer where it says draw in on green areas only. Because it's a black mask we need a white brush. So we've already got a white brush, let's bring our opacity up to 100%. And now let's draw on. Now this is going to be too extreme initially but we're gonna adjust it so and just be careful as you can see when I start to touch the gold on the headdress it's getting the gold so this will affect everything this will affect skin so you have to be a little bit accurate with this anything which is yellow or green is gonna get affected so just be a little bit more accurate take a little bit more time I'm doing this quick for the video. So you'd have to zoom in and do this bit quite neatly. Let's leave it like that for now. Hold down optional alt, get your mask, pull it onto the other mask and click yes, replace layer mask. 
So there we go. So now let's adjust this because that's too strong at the moment. Let's bring that layer with the green down a little bit. So that's quite nice. Now we can just really go in and just bring back our gold on the headdress. So we've gone from there to that really nice kind of dark desaturated green, which I think is quite nice here. Let's try Lagoon. So that's adding more of a bluey green. One thing to watch with this one is you don't want the bluey green to be on her skin too much. You know, you don't want bluey green skin. So there are a few options here. Either on the main mask, you can take a black brush. So just click a brush, make sure it's black. Now what I suggest is you don't do it 100%. Because if you completely take it off the face, it's just gonna look a bit weird. It's not really gonna blend as an image as a whole. So I would keep it to a sort of 30-40% and then just take it off the skin. So before, after. And I think that looks a lot better. And if you want to, you can just build it up in any areas which you think are too dark. So before, after. Another option you can do instead of doing it on the mask overall is you can click in and you can just find which layer is causing the problem. If you've got too much in intensity, it's probably either going to be levels or curves. So let's try curves first. Let's take that off. So now we can do the same thing, but we just do it on the curves layer. And we can bring it onto her hair. And we can just build it up. And we can just take it off any areas that we think are just too dark, too black. And just bring those back a little bit. What we can do as well is if you hold down Option or Alt, click on your mask and pull it onto your Levels mask and let go. You can click Yes to replace layer masks and it will have done the same mask on that layer too. So you don't need to do it twice. It's a little cheat. So before, after. Again, you can also play with the opacity of the whole group. So if you like the effect but think it's too strong, you can bring it down a little bit. I think that's quite nice. The other thing you can do is just test each layer and see what is creating that dark effect. So for example here, that's creating quite a dark effect all around the model. And I actually think I prefer this without. So literally you can really tailor all of these actions. Just come in, just play with them, see what each layer does and adjust it however you want. So I think it's nicer without that. So before, after. You can also then add your own color adjustments. So I think that green's a little bit bright there. So I could come in, I could do a hue saturation layer and just maybe take the greens down a little bit. And I think that's nice. So really make these your own. So this was just a brief introduction to the Storytime actions. I'll leave you to play with them. I won't demonstrate them all. I hope in this tutorial I've shown you the sort of thing you can do with them and how you can personalize them for yourself and make them your own. If you've got any questions, I'm contactable on social media under RR Photographic. And I really hope you enjoy playing with these actions.